Let's talk some sports, baby. better than today and make today better than yesterday and you know what we gonna do we gonna holler at you until next time Stay i will keep it when the deshaun watson uh theme the second half deshaun watson theme show as we'll call it and we'll we'll move into you know assuming the um we'll have a little bit of fun now we uh i think we both agree that the most likely scenario from here is a trade for deshaun watson um, so now we'll look at possible uh, destinations. I know there's a lot of speculation uh, from, you know, far and wide on where it might go as, um, you know, these things tend to go. Um, so how do you see it, Drink? Give me, uh, give me a destination or two or three, if you want, uh, of where you think Deshaun Watson could be headed in a trade scenario. Okay, so when, when you think about Deshaun Watson, I think we talked about um, his, his accolades. Uh, we, Deshaun Watson – if we're talking about position wise, he's definitely top three of his position. That's from first and foremost. If we're talking about NFL wise, he's a top 10, top 15 player. So you say to yourself, a, a player that's that high most likely would be a franchise changing player, especially if you're talking about quarterback. Um, now I know we sometimes you got defensive ends and stuff that might make that list, and you're like, a defensive end might not really be a franchise changer because you got to score points and all that good stuff. But when you're talking about a player or the level of Deshaun Watson, here's the deal. You're going to have to give up some picks. You're going to have to give up a position player. You're going to have to give up some things. So I want to draw that little conclusion before I jump into it. When you look at it that way, you say, what would it go? What would you need to get a, a player of Deshaun Watson's caliber? I'm thinking two first, a second, and a decent quarterback option on that team. Most likely, whoever your starting quarterback was before, that guy's in that trade. Um, when I put all that together, uh, and I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this credit out uh, to um, one Stephen A. Smith. Uh, he he actually was throwing them out, and actually, I, and when I thought about it, I was like, it does make sense. Um, the first, the first option was the New York Jets. Now I know, I know it's the Jets. I got it. Oh, who the hell want to go to the Jets? But let's keep in mind here. The Jets have the capital. They have the two first round picks. They have the money to go buy other players. And they have a starting quarterback that can go to the Texans and do be somewhat productive. So, that's what the Texans want. They want a productive quarterback. They two two first rounds, a second round, and you know if you want to throw something else in and get greedy, I don't know. But my point is this: the Jets got that. Oh, keep in mind the Jets also just hired a minority coach and Robert Salas, good coach. Maybe they they hit that off. And now guess what else Robert Salas don't have to do? Sit here and try to figure out his quarterback situation. Once Deshaun Watson come in the door, that's the guy. Eh, no if ands, buts about it. Listen, now, oh, and by the way, for people that don't remember, the Jets do have the number two pick as well, number two overall pick. That is very enticing. So I know that's very enticing to the Texans because even if the Texans say, hey, we don't want Sam Darnold, we'll just draft the quarterback. Okay, cool. Now you got a good starter and backup in New York if you want, or you got a, a bargaining chip where you could train Sam Darnold to someone else that might want him and get something back for him. So the Jets, <laughs> even though we, we we beat up on them a lot in that market and everything, the Jets is a, a, a plausible destination. And destination number two was the Miami Dolphins. I got it. The Miami Dolphins just traded two. I mean, just drafted two. Well, you going to get rid of two already for Deshaun Watson? You're damn right. Listen, I, I love myself some two. The guy came and changed the coach at Alabama. I I love him some. Too. I love me some tool. But at the end of the day, if I'm Miami and you telling me I can get Deshaun Watson, hey tool, go ahead and uh pack them bags. We we're gonna catch you later. Um, he got to go. I'm 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 sorry. And once again, Miami is another team. Two first round picks. I could throw in a second. I can give you 
a um, deep, uh, average to above average uh, quarterback trade for your team. And also Miami, Brian Flores, GM, minorities, $66 million to spend on the cap. You, you got a lot of stuff going on. And at the end of the day, it's Miami. So you got a lot going on now that I think could benefit Miami and the Texans. So for the for the sake of this this segment, I think I agree with Stephen A. It comes down to I think the Jets and Miami as far as the best case scenario. Now it is other scenarios I've been hearing. Maybe the Colts might try to get them. Okay, maybe the Lions thinking about getting them. It is other teams, even the Patriots. Somebody I th- I heard a scenario with the Patriots. It's other scenarios with teams that might be better all around rosters than those two teams. However, those other teams can't match the other three categories. What am I getting back? What am I building on? Location, et cetera, et cetera. Those other teams don't meet those criteria. But if you're talking about overall better teams, those teams could be considered overall better. The coach, you know, we just seen what the coach did. We know how, how Bill Belichick get down with New England and, you know, and so on and so forth. And one of the points that that, that we was talking about before I, before I uh, close this out, that uh, what Nick Wright said pretty much, it's 32 teams in the NFL. I'm telling you right now, every last one of them outside of the Kansas City Chiefs will take a phone call. They, they might say no at the end of that phone call, but if you're not the Kansas City Chiefs, you're going to pick up that phone and you're going to listen to what they're saying. And if it's reasonable, it's reasonable. If it's not, you hang up. But you're going to listen because this is Deshaun Watson. So, that you know, that's why we're talking about it because this is a big move. This is a big ticket item. So, with that said, I'm, I, I agree with Stephen A., Jets, Miami. We'll see. This is a fun topic. You know, just, I think up front, you know, going back to the last topic briefly, there's, there's got to be – I think there's going to have to be some dialogue either way uh, between the Texans and Deshaun Watson, because if, if they can't keep him, they still got to get together and be like, all right, well, you we gave you a no trade clause, so you know where, you where would go? you like where would you like to go? You know, because I the, I think the last thing you want to do is put in all this effort, you know, for you know, you know, let, let's just say that it's the uh, it's the Jets. Well, Deshaun Watson, they don't have no interest at all in going to the Jets and says, uh, yeah, that looks cool, but uh, no, you know, I don't think you want to waste all that time on all that. Cause we know the Texans, you know, they've been wasting time for year now for years now with some of the stuff they've been doing. So let, let's go ahead and use your time a little bit more effectively. Uh, Nick Casario. Let's let, let's go ahead and take some steps on that. I think um, up front, those are because of the, you know, the draft capital and the, the young, some of the young assets and they do have, both of them have young quarterbacks that you could say, Hey, well, you know, you, you're giving us Deshaun Watson. We can give you all this draft capital. And Oh, by the way, we'll give you a young quarterback who could still do some things. Uh, I don't think I don't Sam Donald to me, he hasn't been given a fair shake uh, with the New York Jets. Um, so I don't I don't know if the guy can play, you know, at a at a somewhat of a, you know, a starting quarterback level. So I mean, that could be something you want to do. I think I think the Jets make more sense than the Dolphins, because I look at the Dolphins and what they've been doing and they brought in there. They got the right coach in Brian Flores and they um, they tore the thing down and now they're building it back up their way. And I just look at them. It, it, they got a they got a little bit of a process type feel to them where they built it down. Now they building it back up. They got a good foundation. Uh, all the draft picks that they've used, they've hit on a lot of them. Got real some good free agent signs. I think you know Xavier Howard, Byron Jones, that cornerback connection that they have. That's a good investment. Uh, Kyle Van Noy, that's a smart free agent sign. They've done a lot of things right, and I think it all comes down to me if the Dolphins think that Tua Tagovailoa is the guy then even though I think Deshaun Watson that's enticing and that that's the best move for right now do you want to sacrifice do you want to sacrifice the direction and the progress you've made to do, to do something that looks real nice and shiny right now so if the answer if the answer if, the, if they don't believe in two on the other hand then yeah I think you have to you have to seriously entertain this and of course they have all the capital in the world to make this happen so I think I think that's where I look and I I'd be interested in like asking Brian Flores, like, what do you think? Is two of the guy or is he not the guy? And I think, I think you have to answer that question before you look at getting to Sean Watson. So I think those, those are two like easy, like easy scenarios to look at. Um, but a couple others that, uh, you know, I've been thinking about recently, 
I think Carolina is somewhat interesting. You know, Carolina, they got the bridge quarterback over there and uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, no pun. No pun intended. Teddy two gloves, you know, yeah, no, Teddy two no, gloves. Yeah, no, I didn't even, I, I really didn't. You know, they say no pun intended. I really didn't mean that. A little bridge, bridge joke there. Uh, but I think, I think with Bridgewater, we, I, I think we, um, even though he got like a mid level contract and like, let's see if he can be the starter. And I think Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater can start for some teams, but I don't know if anyone views him as a guy that can ultimately lead you to where you want to go. I think um, I think if you're Carolina and, you know, that, that's another team that kind of, you know, fell down rock bottom, so to speak, you know, in the final season with Cam Newton, couldn't stay healthy. And then the defense completely went into disarray. You get Luke Kigley retiring. Um, but you got Matt Rule in there. He brings in Joe Bray. So they got, you know, two young coaches who, and I think Carolina, even though it, the record didn't end up being all that impressive, we still saw a lot of things that we liked. They completely retooled their defense. Um, Derek Brown, Jeremy Chin, a um, lot, lot of things to like over there. If you, if there is a situation, and I don't know how the money shakes out, that's uh, one of the disadvantages of not having the salary cap guru himself, you know, in the third box here with us. Um, right, but if right. there is a scenario, but if there's a scenario where you can keep Christian McCaffrey and you don't have to give him up, um, I think Carolina, I think Carolina is interesting. And of course, you know, um, maybe that, you know, going back to the no trade clause, you know, Deshaun Watson, he's got a little bit of a Carolina connection because he played down at Clemson. So there's some, there's some geographic like familiarity there. I don't know if that's a factor here, um, but you know, similar it, it, it's, I think that could be somewhat interesting. I think um, Matt rule and Joe Brady, you know, Joe Brady and Deshaun Watson and what that, what that air raid type offense might look like. Uh, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, that's a great place to start. And if you can keep Christian McCaffrey and you can have Deshaun Watson and Christian McCaffrey in the same backfield, that's the best backfield. You've automatically got the best backfield in football right there. And you can immediately, you know, j- just a couple, just last year, we thought, you know, they dra- like Carol- they drafted an entirely new defense. That- that's how bad off they were. But all of a sudden, it only took them one year and they're heading in the right direction. I think they could get ahead quickly if they could put a package together. The second, the second outside, you know, outside looking in team that maybe should should at least be interested and at least, you know, divvy up and see what they have is the Denver Broncos. I don't talk much about my fandom for, you know, my teams on this show, but I'm gonna tell you right now, ever since Peyton Manning, this team been looking high and low. They've been on a a coast to coast quarterback search and they still ain't figured it out. We got John Elway. He's up, you know, take, he's given himself a promotion and gotten out of the GM role or whatever he's doing. Uh, you have George Patton in there. Um, so, um, and we, I, I don't know. I don't know about Drew Locke. I will say from his rookie to his second year, um, it didn't inspire confidence. It was a, it was a pretty, it was a pretty um, less than stellar year uh, to put it mildly. Um, and, but there's a, they got. They do have a lot of young talent. They got Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton will come back for you. Uh, KJ Hamlin. There's a lot of young weaponry that uh, a guy like Deshaun Watson could. Uh, you know, the sky. I think if you could find a way to get Deshaun Watson in there, of course, Drew Locke would have to go. It'd be a situation of does Houston think? Do they think anything of Drew Locke? And I don't. I don't know all the. I don't know how much draft capital Denver has. I think they'd have to probably go in the hole some, you know, give up some, give up first, multiple first round picks. Uh, but if they could put a package together, I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. I throw Von Miller down there to him. Uh, y'all want aging defensive players. Let's, let's give you a Von Miller and JJ Watts sack combination. Does that sound good to you? I don't know. Uh, but I think Denver should be on the phone and they should be interested. You know, because you know who you no- have to, you know who, if I was them, if I was the Texans and I was trading, you know who you would give up? Who? If, no offense. That's who I'd be no asking fan? for. I would give, I'd no. give you no offense. You could have no offense. You could have no offense and Drew Locke. I'd be like, no, I don't, I don't want Drew Locke. I want no offense. No offense. Uh, I, I, take, I take the old guys. I don't yeah. want Drew Locke. <laughs> I, think, I think those are two, I think those are two less than likely, um, you know, destinations. But I think both Carolina and, and Denver should be, they should be very interested in this development and they should see, they should, like you say, nonetheless, they should be making phone calls and on the, and on the hook with Nick Casario and seeing what, what's a, what's a package that you would be looking at and seeing if they could, you know, if they, if they have enough to get that package. And I think some of this, you know, in the end draft capital and players, if I, if I can get Deshaun Watson and it takes more than just my current quarterback, I look at that too. Are you, 
You want guys that can actually contribute today? Let's talk about that.